Anderson, Electrical Lab Team Leader at Ferrite Products Corp. Uh, this is going to be a video illustrating the effect that test lead length has on the rated impedance values of a ferrite suppression device. So a little bit about our test setup today. We have a Agilent E4991A RF impedance analyzer along with a 16092A spring clip fixture. Uh, the part we're going to be measuring is a ferret products 26430008018001 shield bead. Uh, it's a round bead. So we'll focus. Uh, approximately seven and a half millimeters in diameter, uh, seven and a half millimeters in length, with a 2.25 millimeter aperture. Uh, we're going to be running impedance curves from 1 megahertz to 1 gigahertz. Um, we're going to be using four different wire lengths. So we're going to be using a 25 millimeter wire length, which is our standard wire length that we would use for a part like this. A 51 millimeter wire length. A 102 millimeter wire length and a 152 millimeter wire length. So first thing we're gonna do is put our cable through the core and connect our shield bead to the fixture. And now we're going to trigger a sweep So we see a plot here of impedance over frequency, and we have four markers set at uh, frequencies that correspond to our typical listed values for this part. So those are at 10 megahertz, 25 megahertz, 100 megahertz, and 250 megahertz. So we can see the impedance values that we have here roughly match what we list as typicals. So we, at 10 megahertz, list 42 as a typical. At 25, we list 63 ohms as a typical. 100, we list 92 ohms as a typical. And 250, we list 109 ohms as a typical value. So now for comparison, Let's see what happens when we increase the wire length to 51 millimeters. So we'll connect our part. And let's trigger a sweep. So the 10 megahertz and 25 megahertz values haven't really changed very much. Uh, the 100 megahertz value has gone up by a few ohms and our 250 megahertz value has jumped by almost 20 ohms roughly. So let's see what happens if we go up further still to 102 millimeter wire length. So, part connected, trigger sweep. So now we're starting to see a little bit of an increase at 10 and 25 megahertz, though still fairly comparable to what we had with the original test lead, the 25 millimeter. Uh, the 100 megahertz now nearing 30% increase in impedance and the 250 megahertz we are nearing double what we had originally measured with the 25 millimeter wire length. So just for the sake of an example, let's put an extremely long wire on here 152 millimeters and see what happens. Put 
port connected. So the results here are getting pretty dramatic. So now we're increased at 10 megahertz a fair amount, 25 megahertz we're up over 10 ohms from where we were originally. The 100 megahertz we had about a 50% gain from what we originally had measured and the 250 megahertz we're more than triple our original values. So just for a little bit of fun now let's test the impedance of just the wire with no part attached whatsoever. We'll trigger it. So the 10 megahertz value is fairly negligible compared to our original values that we measured. The 25 megahertz is, is fairly substantial. And interestingly, the 100 megahertz value with just the wire, no part attached, actually nearly matches the typical listed value for this part. The 250 megahertz is still nearing triple what we had originally measured for the core. So really, if you're looking for more impedance, um, just get longer wires and traces on your circuit. No ferrite needed. Just kidding. One more issue with having wires this long for uh, testing impedance is going to be repeatability. So let's put the trigger on this back to a continuous trigger. And just moving the part around see the effect that this is having on the measured impedance values on here and this would create a massive headache for our quality department having wires this long and readings this inconsistent during testing So the big takeaway from all this is to just do your research. Um, taking impedance characteristics at face value can be a risk if you don't know the conditions that the parts were measured under. Regardless of the source of the part, it's important to check that test conditions are listed that the part was characterized using. Um, environmental conditions, temperature, drive levels of the core, presence bias, wire length, clearly. Um, if the characteristics aren't listed, just ask for them. Make sure the characteristics listed for the part are an accurate representation of the performance in your circuit, not just worthless data. If you're looking for more information on any of our products or technical resources on using our parts, be sure to check out ferrite.com and Ferrite Products Corp. We are committed to being your signal solution.